So, I've done a bunch of videos here on YouTube, and there's one tool I really like to use in a lot of those videos. It's a code animation tool. You essentially enter slides, and from these slides, you can animate beautifully between code. It makes it super easy to follow along, and you guys really like it. I've gotten so many questions. Josh, what is that tool that you're using for that? And up until two weeks ago, the answer was Keynote. They have a magic move animation that does what you just saw. But there's a bunch of problems with with Keynote. First off, it's only for Apple users. Second off, you don't get syntax highlighting unless you directly paste from your editor. And thirdly, it's just not meant for code in the first place. You don't even get like a file name at the top of the file to indicate which file that code is supposed to be in. Two weeks ago, I came up with an idea. What if there was a tool meant for code animations that every single one of us can use, regardless if you're using Windows or Mac or Linux, and that lets you export that stuff into high quality, beautiful animations. But there was one one problem. I'm in the middle of writing my bachelor's thesis and I'm super busy with it. So at first I was like, no, I just can't make the time for it. But then I thought that that would be a really cool tool to build. So I thought, hey, what if I give myself two weeks to build it? Whatever I built after those two weeks, I publish it. If it's good or not, I publish it. I just have two weeks to do it. And dude, I know this was going to be hard. These animations from Keynote are pretty advanced, but how hard it would actually be, I came to find out. So right now I've spent like a good day, day and a half on this bug and this stuff just does not work. But there was a lot that happened in between that I didn't tell you about, like the game plan that I created on day one. What do you need to create a beautiful code animation tool? First off, you need to know between two slides, which characters are going away, which characters are new, and which characters are staying and maybe just moving, but maybe not even moving. And it turns out there's a text diffing algorithm by Google called div match patch that does just this. Assume we have two texts, good dog and bad dog. This algorithm allows us to exactly div the before text and the after text. So the GOO part is going away, marked by a minus one. The BA for bad dog is completely new, which is marked by a one. And then the D dog actually stays the same throughout the old text and the new text. So it's marked by a zero. After you know that, in the second step, you can simply animate in the new characters, you can animate out or fade out the old characters, but what about the characters that are moving? Well, you need to calculate the old position, and then you need to calculate the new position in order for the animations to look good and not have this happen. What? And of all parts of the build, this one was probably the easiest actually. So let me give you an example. We have slide one and then the content of slide two. And as the content of slide one, we're gonna choose A, B, C. There we go. And as the content on slide two, we're gonna choose one A, 2b, 3c. So imagine this as the actual text that is showing up on the slide. And now our task is to calculate where did this a go? Of course, we can see it right here where it went, but we need a way to correctly determine this programmatically so that the a went from the index zero in the first string to the index one in the second string. How do we calculate that? This calculation is pretty easy. Assume we start each index at zero, right? So the one would be index zero and the a would be index one. One, we would have the three, four, and then the C would be the last five element. How do we know that the A went from the zero index to the one index? Essentially, it's pretty easy. We take the current position in the slide one, which is zero. Then we add every letter that has been added in front of it. So in our case, that's the one right here. And then we can simply subtract all the letters that were deleted in front of it. In our case, that's no letters that were deleted in front of the A. And just like that, like this, we have the new position. It's zero plus one equals one. And that's exactly where the A is. And lastly, maybe most importantly, the syntax highlighting. The stuff earlier from steps one and two might look good because it animates well, but it doesn't resemble code yet because it's not syntax highlighted. And this step three, syntax highlighting, is the step I assume to be the easiest because there are libraries for you to handle that. You don't need to implement that yourself. Turns out it wasn't so easy. Okay, so at first I really got my hopes up. It looked so nice in the beginning, but let me show you what happens. This component right there, it should animate beautifully and the state does. The state comes in really nice and then the brackets as well. That looks great. We've got the return, but where's the bracket? And now the bracket is missing. Look at this. And it gets worse from slide to slide. So let me zoom back just a, just a bit here and check out what happens. We animate from the slide and the brackets are like completely messed up. The, the P tag is in an entirely different line. Man, this just looks horrendous. 
And here we are. This is the final product. I'm still gonna do changes to this, of course, but we're two weeks in, I'm gonna publish this as it is. And by the way, I can't turn on my lighting because my cat is sleeping behind me. And if I turn on the light, it would wake up. So it's a bit darker. Anyways, this is the kind of final publish status. So essentially we can create new slides just like in Keynote. We can also delete them with a little trash icon up here and we can duplicate slides. This is super handy for easily animating stuff. So I can just um, imagine if we have one slide, I can duplicate it and then in kind of reverse order, delete the content that we want to animate in go into the preview mode and then hit the arrow keys to animate from the first slide now to the second slide where we do all the steps that we together took a look at minutes ago like where should the next letter be what is new what is old what do we need to animate in and what is animated out when you visit this website there's a little example this is the very basic kind of animation where there's something added in here and then also a completely new line edit but of course you can animate anything you want and then you can also hit the export button so the functionality is pretty basic Basic. You can animate code between any amount of slides up to 10. That's the current limit. Um, and then you can hit the export button right here. And that's gonna take a minute to connect to the server and then create a full HD upscale though. So it's actually sharper than full HD 60 FPS video of what you just developed here, essentially using the same animation engine as the front end uses. And we also have a rate limitation and that works using Upstash and serverless rate limiting. So if I try to spam this API right here, we would always get a 429, too many requests from our backend. So we can only export one video per minute because this is computationally pretty expensive to generate videos, especially in 60 frames per second. And the limit just kind of prevents spam against our API. And then it was time to launch the project. I did that on Twitter where I made a post and a video demonstrating the features, which honestly are not that many. You can create slides and animate between them. But that kind of works, at least in Chrome. There's apparently a bug in Firefox where it doesn't really work yet, but I'm working on that. There's a lot of stuff to be added and improved and whatnot, but the proof of concept is there and I'm so happy that people really seem to like it. And I hope you enjoyed this video of how this idea came about and how I built this project in the span of just two weeks. That's gonna be it for me for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one and bye-bye.